What is up guys, my name is Elliot Durant and I'd like to welcome you to the very first video in our Introduction to Splitting series. Today we're going to be taking a look at what I believe to be the most basic building block of the splitting vocabulary, the eighth note. Without further ado, let's get right into it. In my opinion, the eighth note is the very first fundamental building block for splitting because it's the first duple based subdivision that you can apply to a quarter note. Eighth notes also set up so many key checkpoints that we'll be talking about later in the series, which is why this is such a good place to start. Let's begin this lesson by taking a look at one bar of a very basic eighth note based split. For now, we're going to be looking at the parts of drum 2. I'd like to take a quick second to let you know that if you're confused at this point in regards to how to read this music, take a second to click the link in the top right to go to a video where I offer some key info on bass drum notation. With that said, let's now dive into the sample bar. When sight reading an eighth note run, there are a few steps that you can take to make your reading quicker and more efficient. The first thing we're going to do is isolate our own individual parts from the rest. A lot of players like highlighting just their notes as a way to help them focus into their own parts, and it's something that I highly recommend to newer students. From here, the next step is to identify what counts our partials lie on by reading them relative to the downbeats. If I first write out all of the downbeat counts here, I can then use that information to observe that we will play on the and of one and count four. If you're just starting out, make it a habit to write in all of your counts so that you can always refer to them if you're having trouble recalling your parts from memory. This may seem like a tedious process, but doing this a ton will help you develop your sight reading skills to the point that you'll be able to point out all of your partials with just a brief glance. So at this point, we've isolated our parts and identified the counts that they're on. We're going to attack this bar very soon, but before we do, let's take a look at an exercise that will help strengthen your ability to play on any 8th note partial in a 4-4 bar. This one goes by many names, but I'll personally refer to it as floating 8s. The basic gist of floating 8s is that each bar contains one 8th note partial. You start by playing on count 1 in the first bar, then shift the note an 8th note over to the end of 1 on the next bar. The note in the bar after that will be shifted over by an 8th note once again, putting it on count 2. We'll follow this rule until we reach the end of 4, and then the exercise will reset to the other hand. Before we play through this one, let me first go over some tendencies that you want to avoid while rehearsing this exercise. A lot of players have a bad habit of initiating all of the notes on the upbeats with a very stiff and abrupt prep which usually leads to late and counts. Get comfortable with the idea that you cannot prep for a note and also play it at the same time, and make sure that you are prepping early enough to play a quality upbeat note. The second is that players don't seem to take advantage of the timekeeping methods available to them. Let me explain. When playing this exercise, you should definitely be making an effort to mark time to it. If you are marking time, then it follows that every time you encounter a bar where the note is on a downbeat, your foot should hit the ground at the same time as when you hit your playing surface. Also, any time you encounter a bar with the note on an upbeat, you should hit the playing surface exactly in the space between when your feet hit the ground. If you can think of your feet as pseudo notes when you're just starting out, you'll be able to build stronger relationships between the tempo and the placement of your partials. The last thing I'd warn against is listening for a rhythm throughout the exercise. Since this exercise is so consistent, it can be easy to stop counting and simply listen to the spacing of the notes in order to place them. Fight the urge to do this and keep the mind engaged either by counting in your head or out loud in order to really internalize the placing of each individual partial. This will help you achieve the act of being a more proactive player. With all that in mind, here's a clip of the entire exercise on both hands. To reiterate, the reason that this exercise is so important is because if you can play it the whole way through, then you're prepared to play any 8th note partial that a writer may throw your way. Now that we've played through it, it's time to tackle our sample bar. Apply all of the concepts that I've talked about so far. Use a nice relaxed prep whether you're playing on a downbeat or an upbeat, take advantage of helpful timekeeping methods such as your feet in a metronome and recall the special relationships that downbeats and upbeats have to your feet. And lastly, don't worry about patterns or melodies in the music just yet, simply focus on the met and your own individual counts.
There's one more thing I'd like you to be mindful of when playing an eighth note split. As a bass drummer, you need to be aware of the type of playing strokes that you use in an eighth note split, as it is completely dependent on the space between your partials. In general, if the space between notes is more than a quarter note apart, you want to make sure you downstroke the first note since you have enough time to re-prep for the second note. If the space between two notes is a quarter note or less apart, you don't have as much time to re-prep, so you should play a full stroke on the first note so that the prep of the second note is not abrupt. Let's take a look at the drum 3 part. The first note this drum plays is on count 2, and the very next note comes on the and of 3. The space here is larger than a quarter note, so you downstroke the first note and re-prep for the second. The next note lies a quarter note later on the and of 4. Following the rules that we've set before, we know that we must full stroke the and of 3 and use its rebound to prep for the and of 4. Of course, these rules are completely sensitive to tempo. As the beats per minute goes higher and higher, the space between notes and time becomes shorter. So at a high enough tempo, the count 2 of the part that we're looking at might need to be full stroked as the space to the end of 3 gets smaller. Let's quickly review to make sure you've got all of the important information down. Use the sight reading techniques I provided before to learn all your partials quickly and efficiently. Play floating 8s to build your ability to play all 8th note partials possible with great quality. And apply that knowledge to playing your 8th note run and use the right playing stroke for each note. If you keep all of this information regarding proper rehearsal of 8th note isolated splits in mind as you practice, you will be well on your way to setting up a good 8th note foundation for the splits that we'll talk about in the future. I wrote out a few basic 8 on a hand splits that you can download and print for free at bassdrumgroup.com. Try playing through the parts of all 5 drums in order to maximize your understanding of all the partials. And that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video and want to continue seeing more stuff like this, please leave a like and consider subscribing to our channel. If you're looking for a constantly growing library of free sheet music tailored to splitting, please head over to our website, bassdrumgroup.com. We'd also really appreciate it if you check out our awesome merch store. By purchasing anything there, you'll support our pursuit and becoming the best resource out there for bass drummers and score some sweet gear in the process. Finally, drop any questions or comments that you guys might have below and we'll get to them as quickly as we can. And with that guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!